Hi, my name is Dustin Miller. My, I'm from the ULC. I'm going to be an online prosperity show. Some amazing content there. We're going to be talking about the Four Pillars philosophy, world unity, and many other great topics. Now, welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Online Prosperity Show. And today, we've got none other than the self-development guru himself. Dustin, how are you doing, my friend? I'm great. How about you? Very well, thanks. Now, I've been tracking Dustin Miller for quite a while. And he is uh, part of a team that is called United Living Constructs, where they help people with philosophy, self-development, and world unity. Did I say that right, Dustin? You said it flawlessly. Great stuff. Okay, so in as much as we think we know everything else, the words of wisdom um, of the people and all the humanity of long past, it all comes together through a radical approach for unification. This is where these guys come in using, you know, the self-development and um, other strategies to help you and other individuals to actually foster innovation and growth. Now, how does that all come together, uh, Dustin, and how do you guys sort of operate? Well, we focus on making change on a smaller level and then allowing that to grow over time. Whenever someone tries to change on a big level first, it ends up creating a distill kind of approach to it and everyone doesn't follow suit. But when you start from the bottom, you start with the individual, the overall group, the overall whole becomes much stronger. And so if you change each individual in a way that they can grow personally and allow that growth to be exuded through the community, that allows for a much better development overall. Okay. I woke up this morning and everything was functioning. Water was coming out of my tap. I switched on the electricity. The light switched on. I switched on my car. It started. What is actually wrong with this world? So it's not necessarily a fact that like, oh, some things are broken in that manner of speaking. Turning on a car, turning on the house, it's also a matter of the way we live, is the way the community works. The fact that you have to get into a car, the same mentality Tesla has on having uh, your own car in a house. You could have your own car, but it would be more economically and financially efficient to share a car with your family or friends or even just neighbors, or have a system in place where the actual city can transport you to work and back, or your work being online like we do here, you and me. But a matter of the way that we live <clears throat> in a society is what's mattered most. Self-development. And so a lot of people focus on pursuing their own life and achieving their own goals. But in a matter of speaking, they approach it in a way that they don't always end up successful and they end up being in a five, nine to five job that they don't like. They don't have any happiness in their life. Even if they do, it's minimal compared to what they could have. And so we actually focus on developing their lives with the four pillars philosophy, the mind, the body, the spirit, and emotions. And so not only is it a very simplistic level of interaction, but it's also very baseline. And so every aspect of your life, from your mind to your body, to your emotional influx, and to your spiritual beliefs, they all are interconnected in a highly developed way. Not, and it's not even just a ULC philosophy. It's a philosophy based in many world religions we just take a more modern approach to it, to apply into the everyday life. Understandable. So in, in this whole application, you're using what you have termed the four pillars. Can you just give us a brief overview of what these four pillars are and you know um, wh why people need to know about them? Yeah. <clears throat> so we start off with the mind pillar. Generally speaking, it doesn't matter which one you go with first, but generally the mind pillar is a little bit easier to approach. You focus on the cognition, the level of intelligence one presumes to have, and then we start developing more and more. So we do interactions with the brain. We do, not personally. But. So with the mind pillar, we focus on cognition, intelligence, and improving that in any manner of speaking. So if we do brain training games, reading, increasing intelligence, any manner of speaking to improve your mind, improve the way you think, improve how you think. Moving on to the body pillar, this obviously comes down to working out, nutrition, and even the health as well. A lot of people have ailments they actually have to deal with in multiple, in different ways of life, lupus, multiple sclerosis, arthritis, 
broken bones even would count towards that. And so we want to be able to establish the philosophical baseline for people to approach these different situations. And then we have the spirit pillar, which <clears throat> isn't connotated to any particular religion because we don't want to impose on anybody's belief. But the spirit pillar focuses on your inner being, the spirituality of your, uh, of your life. And so meditation, different uh, kind of mantras just from all different kinds of religions. We try to take any ideas or any philosophical belief, philosophy especially, just sharing that with the world. Some people might ha have access to certain things, certain books, certain texts. And so we want to share that and help grow as a person. Finally, emotions are ever-changing, aren't they? Right? Right, yeah. Your emotions definitely. flux up and down. You could be happy, you could be sad. And understanding that will help you improve your life. And so we try to help with emotional intelligence as well. Understandable. We're now living in a world where it's become a whole big global village. Many different nationalities, many different um, religions and beliefs are all merging into, you know, the same communities and it's unprecedented, you know, and also having the internet opening up and leveling up, you know, bringing people together and, um, you know, um, getting all these people having the same dialogues and same conversations. There has to be some sort of a way that uh, this can be brought together. You also talk about world unity and, you know, that we are all a pure essence of a united living sort of construct. And, um, you know, there's few ideologies around that. What, what, what is it about world unity that you, uh, you're trying to bring across here? One thing I would like people to keep in mind is that no one has really truly tried to approach the world as one cohesive whole. Everyone has seen it as isolated sex or different separated countries. The fact of the matter is we are all one race. We're all homo sapiens. There's no reason to have, oh, Asians, Africans, Europeans all be different races in different countries. There's no point to that. It actually ends up preventing any innovation it prevents growth now that we have the internet and a little bit more open minds we are definitely more connected than we used to be but we're still miles away to where we need to be and i think people like tesla uh, uh companies like tesla companies like solar city both by elon or um <clears throat> different countries trying to approach new innovations they are trying to get there silicon valley used to be kind of prime innovation hub and each of these places just get right to that point where we get to that level of innovation, but then we drop back down. The ULC is meant to be a hub of innovation. So that way, anybody who needs to focus on the development of humanity as a whole without any connotations to countries, any connotations to uh, preconceived sex or uh, groups, they can be allowed to focus on that development. I understand. And even given like, uh, given the resources or given the, what's the word I'm looking for? Drive, even the, mo the emotion to do it. Mm, yeah, because you do mention that when people do start living together in harmony and pro prosperity, a lot of the innovation is when it starts happening because right now, um, I don't know if you would agree with me on this sort of uh, statement, the world has plus or minus 7 billion people, but almost one quarter of those people are connected to the internet and this is what we're feeding off of the rest of the world is not connected so can you imagine if we can bring all those minds yeah. and all those um you know mindsets and religions and things that we haven't really figured out um the world will be such a beautiful place that is there all right you also mentioned yeah. that now this has now become a hub way the dreams of every person um, have, you know, the potential of actually coming true. How are you then going to be fostering these dreams just in case somebody's watching this and is listening from another part of the world that we would not have thought of bringing together? They have their dreams, hopes, and aspirations. How then does the hub sort of help foster those dreams? Well, currently it is online platform, so we're not able to physically bring people here, but we do want to in the future take an approach like that. So currently we're trying to develop a platform or a network to bring all those innovative minds together, at least so we can start discussing at the very bottom and eventually start growing into more interactive 
groups and starting to, to create a lot of change. And so right now we want to invite anybody <clears throat> to come to our networks and have discussions, talk about different uh, approaches to feeding the population of the world, global health, anything that we need to do, energy sources, we definitely need to focus on within the next five years because we're going to have a lot of shortages within the next couple of decades, oil, energy, all these different things. And so we're trying to find people with those mentalities and those innovative mindsets to help tackle these challenges. And so in the future, we want to bring people together. And if they're watching this video, it would mean they have internet. We would want to help people who don't have internet as well. We def definitely believe personally as well that everyone should have internet. Like you said, those minds, if they can have access to it, they can create a lot of different content. They can create a lot of different interactions with people online and make a lot of change as well. Understandable. You do mention that, um, uh, I mean, you, you keep referring back to this philosophy that everything is connected. I mean, there's so many different philosophies that, you know, would have either said such words, um, you know, similar along, along the lines that everything that we touch, the planets, the stars, even the galaxies themselves, they're all sort of one and the same matter to us as, as a whole. How then um, are you planning on passing on such a, a very diverse message to people that have been so separated uh, by race, by, you know, uh, visas or by passports? You know, this is the kind of world we live in. Well, what is your sort of action plan to bring it all together? It's a good question. Well, it's a matter of the way we approach the situation. And so our mentality from the get-go is to unify. If our mentality was to profit, if it was to simply get something out of somebody, we would, we would eventually fail. Get, making money off of people is approach to for capitalism. The entire world is not capitalistic. And so we want to approach the world in a new way of thinking. That way, when the world finally catches up to that new way of thinking, we'll already be ahead of the game. Since there is situations out of the control, like visas or passports, the United States, obviously, at the current point, is not a good space for this. We would like to have a space isolated in the future for this situation. I can't share too many details on that right now, but I want to personally as well help people. I always have had an approach in life to help people. I teach aquatics classes on the side after doing this, and I end up personally connecting with people, personally seeing their growth and helping them get to that point. Understandable. Well, Dustin, I can't thank you enough, um, you know, for sharing your wisdom and your time today. And if you've been watching this show and you now really want to get connected uh, with Dustin, Dustin, how can people get a hold of you uh, so they can be part of the ULC? Uh, firstly, I want to say thank you for having me on today. Secondly, I want to say that we have social medias everywhere from Tumblr, Pinterest, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. So you can join us any on there. We have a mighty network for this kind of purpose. And so you can join us on the mighty network. All of them are United Living Construct or at ULC web. We also have our website, which has a form. We have interconnection uh, on there. We also have one last little thing, the email, unitedlivingconstruct at gmail.com. Feel free to message us anytime. Understandable. Well, as you've heard, the ULC really wants to unite people from all over, all ethnicities, all nationalities, backgrounds, and abilities. This way, they were going to be creating a group unlike any other previously created throughout history. Now, you will be on the forefront of actually, um, you know, working with people that are doing remarkable things. They have the ability for instant communication, which can actually be a big tool for massive proportions, right? And with this idea in mind, they want to employ you and ask you to consider the sheer change that they are about to make. And as a collective, everybody else will be winning at this, right? Dustin, I can't thank you enough for having 
um, you know, your time and spending some time letting us know what the ULC is all about. I mean, uh, m- me and my team have been seeing you online and that's the reason why we reached out and we're like, you know what, let's find out and let's connect and we can use our platform to actually bring you across so that you can share your message. And thank you so much. I can't wait to see what else you guys have got in store for us in the future. It's only going to grow, my friend. <laughs> Understandable. Thank you so much today. Thank you. Bye. Sorry about that. I, no. uh, <laughs> I did get a little bit nervous at one point. Uh, <laughs> I did get a- Really? <laughs> I try to make it as, uh, as, as, as non-threatening and as, po- as, as comfortable as possible. Oh, you did great on that. In fact, I would have been more nervous had you been like a bad interviewer, but you were amazing. You were great. <laughs> great stuff. Okay. Now-